morning. Happy Monday. Happy Veterans Day. A sincere thank you from Peak Cycles to all who serve or has served our beautiful country, which includes my dad, David O. Peak. I see you every day, Dad. As for this week, it's going to be another busy one. A short week, if that, we're headed to Glendale, Arizona to support the Peapod Voodoo Ride. One of my favorite places to visit, Arizona. We've got a lot of bike family out there, so I'm really looking forward to it. As for what's happening with Peak Cycles, let's go take a look. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Cover your eyes, cover your eyes. <laughs> Actually, I'm a bit further than what I'm going to show you today, as I had a pretty productive Friday and Saturday, so I just let the cameras roll so I can share a few things with you. We're going to talk about setting up the jig, talk about chop source a little bit, and how to utilize a digital level. So let's go ahead and cut to that. Appropriate dropout spacing, axle height, head tube rake calibrated. If you're not already familiar with this frame jig, it's put out by Chop Source, originally designed for motorcycles. It's become more popular in the bicycle industry over recent years because I know there's several of us using this now. Most known as the rotisserie jig. It's pretty obvious where it gets its name. I'll be honest. I don't use the table jig hardly at all after investing into this. Total back saver, especially when welding, getting in certain positions. Getting ready to level it up, and we'll hit that next. Looks good there, looks good there. Tighten it up down here, keeps the jig from spinning or moving. And then I like to use what is one of the best investments I ever made is this laser level. Has a couple different modes, stationary and gravity mode, where no matter how much you swing it around, it goes back to zero, as long as your jig is leveled up. I like to set the laser up there at the top of the steer tube where the bolt comes through, line runs down the middle, all squared up, you know you're good. Going back to the old days when you would eyeball this, it's so hard to tell when you're rolling your tubing if it's walking so you get it on the jig and then you find out maybe you're not as square as you thought you were. Anyhow, that's that. Moving on. So there you have it. Just a few things that make my life easier in the shop. Hopefully some useful information for you. Meanwhile, we're a little over a week into daylight savings time and I've yet to reset my clock. Too lazy to get up there and pull it down. Remember the early days of the clock? I had a face on the front. You could just move the hands back. Who was a genius who got rid of that and put it on the back of the clock? Anyhow, let me climb up and do that. Meanwhile, you guys make it a killer week.